All right, you ready? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's always ready. He's re- he's ready to go. All right. What is good, YouTube? This is the FF Dynasty coming at you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Be sure to subscribe, like, and comment below with either love or if you're feeling like some hate, throw some shade down there. Either way, it all greatly helps us out so we can keep bringing you new content. Welcome back. Oh, yeah. We're going to finish up our uh, little interview with Angelo underscore fantasy on the Twitters. He's been fantastic. If you if you're not familiar with this guy, you got to go check him out. He's constantly posting awesome threads on mostly rookies, but you do other things than rookies on the threads, right? Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. right now, it's the rookie time of year. Yeah. Right now, it's the rookie time of year. Uh, I think last year I did like a kind of like a mid-season and postseason recap of some of the rookie backs that we saw kind of going last year's class. Dave Montgomery, Devin Singletary, um, obviously Jacobs, um, Josh Jacobs and Miles Sanders. Um, did those as well, kind of looking at, you know, what went right, what went wrong, and kind of everything in between with those guys. Yeah, definitely go check out his feed. There's a lot of a lot of information. You can learn something, so go check it out. All right, we're going to get into the rest of these rookie running backs and kind of see where they're at, see where, where you have them. Um, so is there is there a clear-cut number one? It sounds like all show we've been basically saying that Jonathan Taylor, I think we all agree, is is the number one, and it didn't have anything to do with the combine. Um that is that the clear cut number one guy for you? Yeah, for me, I mean, I think pre combine, post combine, um, he he's my clear cut number one. I think he's the only back in this class um, that I think has a true shot at the rushing title in the near future. Uh, I think he's a guy that you could see be over sixteen hundred yards and potentially thirteen or so total touchdowns as a rookie, uh, and that's definitely in the high end RB one conversation. Yeah, right away. that sounds and good. I'll have that. Yeah, that that that's a that, yeah. He's definitely a player that I I want a lot of, man. So yeah, um, I he, agree. For me, and, he's a guy that that could immediately be by this time next year in in the middle or back end or if, probably most likely the middle of of the first round of startup drafts for running back. Oh, picks. for sure. If he's a one oh, if he's a one oh four, one oh five next year, is anyone really surprised? No, I'm I, definitely not. Um, he's the only running back I have in my in my first tier my first tier is my essentially my guys who are potential gold jacket guys my all pro types not like last year there was no running back in in my first tier if i wanted to kind of take this method um but my tier two guys are what's coming up that's more of the guys who have kind of that pro bowl type ceiling you know who can be really good players um they have good skill sets as both a runner and receiver. And the first back I have in that one is um, CEH, uh, Clyde Edwards-Hilaire. I think he's not getting enough attention. Um, he's just he's a back that has just super impressive anticipatory qualities as a rusher and provides legitimate 100 target upside, which is an absolute massive boost if you're in a PPR league um, and it provides a great floor for him um, as a pass-catching option on an NFL offense. Yes, um, I said it earlier. He oh. had 55 catches last year. That is insane for one year in a college season, yeah, a, especially yeah. because yeah. what they were deploying and four four wide receivers and throwing it and like 60 touchdown passes and all the accolades that Burrow had to have to have the running back have that many catches on the team is is crazy. Oh yeah, I mean they had Jefferson Chase and Thaddeus Moss out there too, and I mean they they had they have a lot of playmakers on that offense, and he was one of them. Um, the next guy is a guy who I think people are extremely high on and have been high on for the last couple of years. Because of the system he plays in, too, his backs are just churned out of there, and that's Georgia running back DeAndre Swift. Um, I, I think Swift's a good back. I think he has like the prerequisite in-space skill set that you like to see from a modern-day back. But I think he may initially struggle with some of the processing, the processing skills necessary for him to be a, a complete and effective between-the-tackles rusher. I think he kind of struggles with some of the more nuance of the position. Like we kind of talked about earlier with some of these backs, it might take him a half a season, a season or more to kind of get used to what the NFL brings the tail from a processing standpoint. A couple of years ago, I was super high on, I loved him. Didn't pan out. It was Ronald Jones. Uh, he was super young coming to the NFL draft. He's only 20 years Still old. Still super a young. Lot of physical, a lot of physical ability, but he never really caught up to the processing 
side of the game. He he always played faster than he processed information, but it, that still hasn't caught up to um, his play speed has not caught up to his um, how he processes information. And I think we saw him get better Did, this year. Yeah, it seemed yeah. like he was trending in the forward. direction and was being a little more physical in, in, in yeah. as far as Ronald Jones he goes. Like 20 pounds or something like yeah. that, right? I mean, he gained like 15, 20 pounds. Uh, he put on some muscle. Um, and he started that, catching a lot more balls than he's at. Like that yeah, was one of the huge knocks yeah. is that he had like exactly. 20 or less catches yeah. over his whole career at USC. And everybody was like, ah, oh, he can't be any good because he can't catch balls. Like I mean, he can catch. They just weren't throwing it to him. And then he came yeah. out there. I mean, I thought he looked pretty good at a lot of different stretches too. this year. He, they just would never let him get in a groove. Like they would just, okay, let's send in Peyton Barber now. Like I, I know I, I did too. I, I think he has an interesting skill set, man. And I think he, yeah, we were really I'm high on him as a player. But I think he has still a long way to go in terms of the nuance, yeah. the position, pass, pass protection, that type of thing. But the next back I have is when we talked a lot about it at length is J.K. Dobbins, man. I mean, J.K. Dobbins, like I said, versatile, uh, physically gifted player, um, really good blend of runner receiver. Um, I, I think, like I said, he is a touch totals potential to be like an Aaron Jones type. I don't think he'll be the traditional Ezekiel Elliott. You know, we're seeing 20 carries and – four targets a game, I, I think it's more so the, you know, he, he's going to be a high efficiency guy and, and can be a really good weapon on a good NFL offense. Um, and for me, that's the end of my tier two. And so that, like I said, my tier two is my guys who kind of have that pro bowl type upside. So who, um, Clyde who, Edwards, DeAndre Swift and uh, Dobbins round out two for you. Yep, they round out two. And, and my tier three. Well, here, real um, quick. I'll probably go through four, but go ahead. Real yeah. quick before we get to the tier three, I wanted to ask a little bit more about Dobbins. Um, what, what's, what, why do you have him at kind of like the end of that tier two? Like if you were on the clock, you're going to be taking a couple other guys ahead of him, it sounds like. What are some of the negative things that are making you lean towards like taking a Swift or a Clyde Edwards ahead of a guy, ahead of Dobbins? Sure. Sure. I or were, were they really necessarily like, ahead of them, or were you just putting a tier together? More so, more so, they're all in that like they're next to each other. So like if we just all kind of you know just lay them out in the line, but what would make me take them? That's a great question. What would me take guys like Swift and Edwards Hilaire over him is, I just think a Edwards Hilaire is the best pass catching back in the class that holds a ton of value in today's NFL. I think Swift has more upside than J.K. Dobbins has. Mm-hmm. I think he's more talented, um, has a more dramatic movement skill set, and he can do a lot more in space True. than Dobbins can and has a lot more room to grow than Dobbins does. Um, and a, it really depends on the environment they kind of go into. I think yeah. that will tell us a lot um, who their offensive coordinator is, the quarterback, offensive line, how many playmakers they have around them. Uh, those are all important factors. But if Dobbins goes into a good situation – he could very well be at the top of this tier. Um, yeah, I think but, I would. I think I would. I, I think I. I'm personally. I think I have Dobbins. I think Dobbins would be at the top of that tier for me. Then, I like it. Okay. Then maybe Clyde Edwards and, and DeAndre. It's the, but they're kind of neck and neck. But I I would give the tip of the cap to to Clyde Edwards. Just like you said, on a pass catching prowess. Not that DeAndre's, um, not solid in that aspect. But I don't think he's super great, and it's definitely not the route runner that uh, C E H is. Um, but I, I, I would say like what you said, how he, you don't, you don't think that, um, that Dobbins has the ceiling that Swift has. I think I would go the opposite. I think that's why I have him reverse is because I think that Dobbins has the most ceiling out of, out of those guys. I like that. Yeah. I think you could definitely argue either way. I mean, for me, a guy like Swift, I just think he's, he's unrefined in a lot of, a lot of areas. Um, well, he ran the 40, yeah. so that, <laughs> that helps. Yeah, I know. Right. He did. Um, but I, I, they're both pretty. What's close, Dobbins anyway. hiding? <laughs> <laughs> I think you're split. You're splitting hairs with both of them. I think they're yeah. both really good players. Um, but I agree yeah, on the tier. Essentially, I like the one, and the, and then these those. That's pretty much where I would have it as well. I definitely I agree with the tier, and like we've gotten asked this question on our Patreon show and whatnot, like who who's you know who are you taking over who, and it's it's too early, and and a lot of times everybody likes to say, well, landing spot dependent, you know, and I got caught up with that in previous years and it's like Sony Michelle's landing spot was way better than Nick Chubb's landing spot. And now who do you want? 
way more than the other guy, like just a year later. Um, so yeah. I'm, I'm trying to learn and maybe not let that because things can change so much. But I mean, everyone was down on AJ Brown last year because he landed in Tennessee and now he's a, yep. like a second round startup pick, as according to DLF anyway. But I totally agree. Right. I think you're, you're splitting hairs like the guy I like the most is whoever I'm watching at that point. Like, oh, this guy's awesome. Like, and then I watch the other guy. I'm like, well, this guy's awesome. And like, I don't know who I'm supposed to choose. Right. All right. So where? So we're at Jonathan Taylor tier one break tier twos, uh, Ceh, Do- or uh, Swift Dobbins starting tier four. Where are you at? Uh, tier tier three. Tier I three. Think. Oh, we're sorry, tier three. Yeah. <laughs> No, you're good. Three, we'll th- we'll two, three, three, four. Yeah. And we'll end up four. Uh, for me, Cam Akers is that is my only back in tier three, and the reason being is this is my kind of like ceiling floor tier of the super high ceiling, but the really basement level floor. I think that's Cam Akers. I mean, I think he has the ceiling to be one of the best backs in this class, if not the best back in this class, right? He because he has so much untapped potential. Terrible offensive line. Right. Another another person where you're factoring player. in booty team. Uh, how bad it was terrible. around him. Oh, yeah. If you watch Florida State play, man, I mean, it's it's embarrassing the type of inefficiency they had on offense. It's great. Um, and, and he was he was a lone bright spot in there. Um, yeah. I, I like a lot about his game. What do you think um, about his movement? <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I like it. I just wanted a drink. I just wanted a drink. That's yeah, good. for me, when um, it's watching Acres, it's really hard to tell. Like, the team is so bad, and it'll just look so bad for so much of the of the game, and then all of a sudden he'll bust off a long touchdown run. It's like, oh dang, that dude does have some good movements. <laughs> oh, yeah, he does, and I think like the biggest thing for him is he's really good in short areas. He's really good in the phone booth. Uh, he has like, excellent short area instincts. But I think the biggest thing that he needs to really kind of work on is he's he doesn't anticipate well when it comes to seeing the game right he hasn't kind of you know put the chess piece there before it's there um he kind of stops his feet sometimes and you know he takes on defenders when he shouldn't take them on and it's just a little subtle nuances that's something i wanted to ask you is is the amount of contact that he takes is that does that concern you because it seems like a lot of times he's just trying to maul a guy over and it, it it seems like he takes a fair amount of big hits is that something you're concerned about with- would, would you say that you're more concerned about him taking unnecessary contact or are you saying like the amount of contact that he's taken either one contact I think the unnecessary contact i think you're going to take contact in general as a running back and that adds up but i think similar to darius guys is a guy and they're actually fairly similar stylistically it's they, they have the skill set to to finish runs Every time they touch the with ball, with power, right? drink, <laughs> but but <laughs> with power. But I think the biggest thing for them is: do they have to do that? Do yeah. they have to? You know, and it, it it becomes a business decision sometimes. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like, do the is you know finishing this run going to get me six, seven extra yards? If it's going to get me maybe a half yard, is it going to get me no yards? You know, that's the thing that we have to take into account. Cause the NFL level, I mean, these you're not running over Miami now. You know, you you're not running over you know the Hurricanes. You're you're probably you're going against. The you're, you're running off. You're right. running over the best player on the Hurricanes every time. Is essentially exactly. what you're doing. Exactly. <laughs> probably so, way better than the best player on the Hurricanes. <laughs> yeah, well, it definitely is. But I, I think the biggest thing we have to look at is if if you if you're like kind of in your rookie drafts and mean man like. I kind of want a guy that has that super high ceiling. I, I want the home run pick. Akers is the guy, man. I mean, the, he, he's as talented as any back in this class. He just has a lot more to work on and needs a really good environment to get there. And I think it might take him a season or so or maybe half a season, similar to what we saw um, to Miles Sanders. I was, that's what, that was my last um, – that was what I was going to finish up with is like – I did. I think the way you're talking about him and the way that from what I've seen on tape is that I would kind of put him in the Miles Sanders category where I think this it's a really good athletic player just needs to figure it out a little bit. And like you said, need, might need some time to learn the nuances of the game. So I think that's perfect. Oh, for sure it is. For sure. I think, I think guys like Sanders, um, they're important to evaluate, but it's also really important to understand like how they need to grow. And we even saw Sanders at the beginning part of 
2019 last year struggle kind of doing a lot of the things that you were worried about him doing exactly and it's just just the anticipatory qualities the vision just his footwork was was unrefined and just a lot of the things that like we saw on tape right we recognize this but but you had a good coach life. and you got put in a good yes, situation exactly. so yes, it's just stayed, crazy how that coach. right yes, well he got Peterson, forced into it yeah. Dude, they, Staley they is just, a phenomenal coach. They didn't just hand him the the reins like mad players got injured, and they were. I mean, even uh, like who's the other guy? Boston Scott. Boston Scott was getting oh, was like great. tons of runs. He was awesome. Yeah, he was great. It's clear they want to yeah. use a committee, and they were forced into handing him and force feeding him, and then he was doing a lot of good work towards the end of the year. And do you think he's? Do you think he's inflated? His value's inflated? Do you think he's like too I think expensive? He's super, I think he's overdrafted right I'm now. Asking, oh, I'm asking I, Angelo. I think right now, especially, man, because I think kind of what we saw here is Jordan Howard, you know, he's he's a Miami Dolphin now. So, you know, Sanders had a really, really strong latter half of the season. They had to lean on him a ton to make plays, and he did, and he was great. And he's kind of, you know, he's fixed some of the problems that he had early on you know, in, the, in the season and throughout his collegiate career. But you're right. I think his value is a little bit inflated, and you could sell him for a pretty penny right oh, now. Oh, a ton. Right now, it's, it's him and Boston Scott. And I'll tell you what, Boston Scott's a big sleeper this year as well because they love him. Love him. And if you watch Boston Scott play, there are points of time where he outplayed Miles Sanders. Just flat yeah. out. There was that game, I think, against the Giants where Miles Sanders actually went out. I think it was that game. They went out with an injury. Boston Scott put him on their, put him on their put back. Put him on the Scorsese back, Yeah. Out. Right? Yeah. It's like, man, I, I can't like, imagine the Eagles don't bring in another uh, a running back yeah. either through the draft or and, and, and it just it just seems yeah go ahead no go ahead. it just seems like the, the Eagles until they prove otherwise they are using a platoon system and they were just kind of in they had to they were full, they, their hand was forced last year to give Miles Sanders the kind of run he did get now if you were gonna just give Miles Sanders the feature role then he's not inflated at all like you should that he should be drafted exactly where he is. I just worry about that. I don't. I don't think that he's going to be given as much opportunity as maybe he's being drafted as. Oh, I, I agree with that. I mean, I think last year we saw Jordan Howard go down. Jordan Howard was really good before he went down. Yeah, too. and the Eagles um, were playing a good brand of football with Jordan Howard. Exactly. Jordan Howard went down. Um, Darren Sproles he went down. People forget he was lost for the year too. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, you're down to your rookie running back and your practice squad guy in Boston Scott. And on but top think, of that, Al- Alshon was down. Djax was down. Yeah, you were missing Alshon, offensive linemen all over the place. And a lot of the time. Um, right. J.J. Ortega Whiteside wasn't, you know, was wasn't irrelevant. Yet. Yeah. <laughs> and they're relying on Greg Ward Jr. to make plays. So right. it's like, you know, we have to take all that into account. And the Eagles are going to get a lot better this offseason. They're, they're going to they're gonna get some talent in the NFL draft. They're probably going to draft the receiver early. Um, my guess is probably a guy like Jalen Rager, um, Henry Ruggs, one of those one of those types. They might have um, a left tackle issue, though, because Peters has been a stalwart. He's been up and down, but I think he's he might be out. He's pretty sure he's out of there. And I, I, mean, I know they've drafted some players, and mm-hmm. they've done a good job of patchworking that line from time to time. And they have a really good line most of the oh, time, but he's a huge – he is ridiculous when yeah, he's out there and right. For a long time, so yeah. – um, that that makes a big difference, but I mean, he, Sanders is a guy right now. I, I love what he's doing as a player. I think he has a super high ceiling, but I think right now he's you know he's a definite he's a he's a sell he's a sell for me in the at in at this moment in time because right now people are thinking, man, is this the year Peterson just gives him the reins and he's yeah. like a two hundred fifty three hundred touch guy? Yeah, the chances that happening and them not bringing another back are pretty slim, and that means Boston Scott's not going to play a role and if boston scott's going to play any role that's going to be as a pass catcher yeah right and that's where miles sanders did a ton of damage I, that's, I was so gonna say the exact same thing love that we're right yeah. here baby we're right here <laughs> i love it um do we have a so do you have a tier four and are they worth mentioning they are worth mentioning i think this class is extremely deep i think we kind of forget some of these names aj dill made a ton of noise at the combine He's in my tier four. Well, the first guy in my tier four is um, Keyshawn Vaughn, Vanderbilt running back. Um, showed me well at the combine, ran low in the low four or five, which is what I I, I didn't expect that. Um, when he was at Illinois, or before he was at Illinois, when he was in high school, he was like a four seven guy. 
So to, to see him run the four fives is extremely encouraging, especially in the low four fives. Will help his draft stock tremendously. Um, him, you need to um, get these guys to holler follow. at you to help him run the forty. Is what you need to do. <laughs> I don't think he's hired me to do that. <laughs> but, um, Sorry. But, um, no, you're good. Him, Anthony McFarlane, um, AJ Dillon. I like McFarlane. Um, and Zach Moss are guys I think are all in that in that range. I think if you kind of said who's going to get drafted the highest, it'd probably be AJ Dillon just because of how he, how he the combine, the combine made him some money and improved I, the stock. Money. And I think Derek Henry's making him some money. Him. I'm yeah, I'm not sold in, on him as a player, but he's. 6'3", 250 pounds. You know, and, that and he, he just moved really power. well in yeah, underwear. So I think he's going to be a, um, um, a third round pick, I'd say. Vaughn in the fourth, in the probably the fourth round, later third. Um, McFarlane might go in the later third, early fourth, mid fourth. And I think Moss probably mid fourth round. But all those guys can have NFL roles. Do I think those guys would be stars like Jonathan Taylor potentially? No. But they could be a you know a good NFL player. And you know, things can happen. We sure. have seen Alfred Morris be a Pro Bowl back. Okay, you know what I mean. So it's like 50, right. like Alfred Morris is like fifteen hundred rushing yards, I think, during his rookie year with RG three. And then oh, yeah. you know we see guys like Philip Lindsay who were undrafted having back to back thousand yard seasons. So it's really important to kind of evaluate these deeper guys, and it goes deeper than tier four. There's a lot of backs I like out there, like Reggie Corbin, Darrington Evans. Um, there's, there's a bunch of them, man, that, that I'm, I'm fairly high on and would love to see them get NFL roles to see what they'll do, but it it comes down to where they're at and what their environment looks like. Two guys left off the tiers that I, that I would that I would I want to ask a question about. Because yeah, man, I know one, of, one of one of them I really like, and the other guy I'm not too sure of. I mean, I don't really. I mean, one the first guy is Eno Benjamin. So, how do you oh, feel about? Oh that? yes. What? What's That's not where I thought you were going. I, I didn't know. I thought you didn't we think I was where I was going. Yeah. Mm. So, but I do want to. I want to ask about Eno, Eno. Not in two in tier four. My man can't be tackled, right? Like that's got to count for something. Whoa. I mean, he's probably, I mean, he honestly is. There's so many backs in that tier four for me. I, I know, and I don't mean to put you on. I hate when people do that shit to me, but I just, no, you didn't fine, mention fine, his fine. name, so I want to. I like the Benjamin, man. I, I think he's a good player. I think he, he, you know what? He reminds me a lot of baby David Montgomery. It's just in terms of how he takes contact, how he navigates it. He's just a good player, man. I mean, and that's just who he is. Do I think he'll get the role Dave Montgomery got in Chicago? Do I think he's that bell cow type? Probably not. But he's good enough to have an NFL role or maybe a, a B in an AB committee. But I, I like him a lot. I mean, he has super unique traits through contact. Um, he's above adequate. He's above adequate receiver. Um, I, you, just, you know, his speed and acceleration qualities are you know, average at best. But that's not what you're, you know, you draft them for. You know, he's yeah. kind of in that Devin Singletary, I, Dave. God, we're on the bowl. same page. I was literally just about to say, I said the same shit about Devin Singletary. I think he's a great B to somebody's A. Yeah, look I, at I us. Think we're so. just vibing. So we're we'll, just two we'll guys see. vibing. Love it. We're vibing <laughs> over here. It's beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. All right, who's the other guy? Yeah, any love for our man P. Ryan? Yeah, LaMichael P. Ryan is the next guy that I, I mean. I got fooled once with Samaje, hey, which still I still don't think he that. didn't get a fair shake. Yeah. And, no, and so, <laughs> LaMichael, how do you feel about LaMichael? Can he totally redeem ourselves? Fool me once. Uh, I, I like LaMichael P. Ryan, man. I think uh, I'm not convinced. <laughs> that didn't sound convincing. You, you're being nice uh, now. Tell I us just, what you really think. He's trash. Um, you think he's trash? No, I don't. Okay. I, 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 <laughs> I'm hard pressed to think that any NFL talent is trash, but it's very difficult in a class this deep to find a significant role immediately. I think if you love Michael P. Ryan, you draft him late and you you're along for the ride and yeah. hope something happens. It's it's going to take an injury. It's going to take maybe multiple injuries. It's going to take waiting a year. Multiple or two. injuries. <laughs> it, it, like think of it like this. Alvin Kamara was the third running back on that depth chart in New Orleans. Mm -hmm. It was Ingram. Oh, so P. Ryan's kind of like Kamara. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, Putting words in your mouth. I, I love it. I, I think it's going to be more so, man, like where he ends up. Like, I don't know. I mean, if he ends up, let's say, in a place like 
Houston, where the Johnsons aren't, you know, David Johnson doesn't really have a clean bill of health right now. Duke Johnson, we know what Duke Johnson is, but that third guy might might play a big role. Or Atlanta, where we saw their second and third backs get a ton of run last year. Yeah, they don't really have one right now. Exactly. So it's going to really depend on. I have zero um, faith in Brian Hill. I don't. Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's to be anything more than you know a, a stash for you. But I think in a class this deep and running back across the league is really interesting right now because there's a lot of movement. There's a lot of movement going on. You can drink to that one too. Um, but I've about I drank myself of, out of this of one. Players moving around and like Melvin Gordon's moving somewhere. Obviously, Todd Gurley. Mm-hmm. We saw David Johnson. Devontae we Freeman. Devontae Freeman, yep, you're right. Um, Austin Eckler staying put. And we're seeing kind of the landscape of what the rookies, um, where they can land and, and you know be prevalent right away. We're kind of seeing that take shape here. So it's just really important to evaluate that and see what are some like like red landing spots, yellow landing spots, and green landing spots and kind of seeing what that looks like because it's – it's important to kind of see ceiling and floor right away and look at it like last year when we loved Dave Montgomery coming out. Like I did, a lot of people did, a lot of people didn't as oh, well. Me too, I loved him. A lot of people said, hey man, Chicago's a really good spot for him. And I'm like, hold on a second. I'm a Bears fan, unfortunately, right now. But biggest thing is, look at look at their quarterback play. Look right. at their offensive line. Below average quarterback play, below average offensive line. Do you really expect a rookie? Not normally a recipe for success. Yeah, exactly. And the last thing is, and below average offensive line, below average quarterback, and they have a hundred target running back on their roster right now with three Cohen. Right. Like, what are you, you expecting that guy to slot in and do? So it, it's being realistic in the expectations. And you know, with, with Miles Sanders, that was different. He's behind a guy like Jordan Howard. Howard Sproles got hurt. Mm-hmm. Jeffrey got hurt. D. Jax got hurt. It's the Miles Sanders show and the Boston Scott show. Tevin Coleman and, hurt. Brita can't hold on to the ball. Kind of hurt. Mo, a Q Moster, you know. Bingo. So bingo. And it depends. And the like the thing is, all these guys are talented running backs. They're on NFL right. rosters for a reason. All it takes is a couple injuries. Raheem Moster is actually a like he's a he's probably one of the fastest players in the NFL. Actually, he's probably the third fastest player in the NFL right now. People don't really know that. His track but speed is outrageous. Oop. Oh, yeah. He's run, he's run like, I believe, 10 to 7 in the 100, 10 to 8. Flying, right? So it's, you know, guys like him open up in Shannon's office, offense, get to the second level. And he's up to speed so there, fast. It's crazy. There, 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 there's five plus yards per carry right there. So, but yeah, um, it takes a situation. But I think P. Ryan, among others in this class, can slot into a situation in potentially have success um, you're just saying oh, that <laughs> I, I i just don't think we know what some of those later two guys to be honest yeah. with you. those guys are so tough like we, do we ever think philip Lindsay be a you know no. thousand yard rusher? no definitely not no i mean and and i think that's one of the weakest parts about a lot of dynasty uh players is the the patience for anything to happen is is almost non-existent like right they just yeah, they're, they're so quick to turn on some, but they have no conviction on on guys. And but then there is guys that just for what like Sammy Watkins forever, the value just held and held and held and held. Like it's just it's so strange. Like and there's other guys that'll just they'll like Philip Lindsay never has gotten the respect that he maybe deserves. You no. know, it's just it's, uh, 100%, it's strange. Never. All right, so let's get into actually talking about some dynasty you, fantasy football. To end you this good, thing. Angelo? We've had you here for a long time, so you good to get okay, in this I'm last good. set? I'm good if you are. All we're, right, we're rounding the, the last leg of the marathon. The meat here. and potatoes here. This is what, 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 what we all came for here: the dynasty spin. 